Hello everyone, uh, this is just a quick video on my latest purchase which is the Elegoo Most Complete Starter Kit Uno R3 project which might sound like a lot, here we go, it's the Uno R3 it's got the same chip as an Arduino, same layout as an Arduino it is an Arduino, just not made by Arduino it is a lot cheaper, it's not counterfeit because they're not trying to pass it off as an Arduino, it is just made by a different company, which as the IDE or the software is open source and the hardware is open source, this is absolutely fine. It runs in the Arduino IDE on Mac, Windows and Linux, uh, connected via USB. Got power cable which I'm just using to show the basic blink sketch that comes preloaded on the board. I have used the board, but I put the blink sketch back on for the video just to show you. Uh, it's got your power pins down at the bottom left, analog in, and your digital with six PWM channels and the serial as well. So the set comes in a starter kit, so it's a very nice box for it all to come in. Nothing worse than getting a kit and it ends up in a cardboard box that's not separated or anything. But this is a quite nice divider it comes with. First thing, you get a CD with PDF for the lessons, code that you need for the lessons, and libraries for the code. <coughs> I'm not going to pull everything out and explain what we got, I'll just run through the list. On the lid of the box there is a sheet that shows you what's included. So. The Elegoo Uno R3 controller board, which I've just showing you. There's an LCD 1602 module with pin header. That's not another thing to note. There's no soldering required with this kit as is. If something needs to plug in, it has either male or female pins. So you can just connect straight away. It's got an RC522 RFID module, which comes with a little token and a card. It comes with a prototype expansion board, which is the shield. Uh, this is one that I am actually going to show you. So yeah, it's just a shield. Everything copies through. The breadboard on it is removable and you've got proto board beneath. Um, so you can do prototyping on that. Um, being a shield, it means that I'm trying to do this on camera and look at it myself is quite difficult. Uh, let's try and get this lined up. Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry, I'm not plugging this in on camera. It's too fiddly to do that. So, yeah. Goes directly on top, expands your pins through, and then you've got all this lovely area that you can do loads with. Good little board, uh, the reset button. Yes, it does. If you look in there, that's it initializing. Board's initialized. Reset button works through. It's a brilliant little thing. <coughs> okay, carrying on with what we got. There's a power supply module which is used when you're using motors, etc due to the current limitations of the outputs on the board, the Elegoo board, the, or the Uno R3 I should say, both Arduino, Elegoo and any other makes, um, they're low current, so trying to drive motors through the board isn't the greatest idea. But they supply a power supply module with this, which does it for you, basically. There's a GUI 5 to one module, which is the accelerometer uh, and gyroscope module. There's a servo motor, a stepper motor, the stepper motor driver board. Comes with a HC SR501 PIR motion sensor, a sound sensor module, a water level detection sensor module, an ultrasonic sensor, a DS3231 RTC module, which is the real time clock, the rotary encoder module, the DHT11 temperature and humidity module, IR receiver module, it's got a joystick module, the remote, the infrared remote which goes with the IR receiver. It's got a max 
7219 module, which is an 8x8 LED matrix. Um, there's a one digit seven segment display and a four, four digit seven segment display. There's an L293D chip. There's a 74HC595 chip. There's an active buzzer and a passive buzzer. Two potentiometers. There's a five volt relay. Um, you get a fan blade and three to six volt motor with wire. So again, no soldering. There's a membrane switch module, which you can just see poking up with the ABC369 there. Um, there's an 830 tie points breadboard included, which is brilliant. I'll have a little explanation of breadboard at the end. There's a nine volt battery with DC. Um, so you can run this off battery power plugging in where I've got the nine volt supply at the moment. There is a 9 volt 1 amp adapter which I have plugged in, means you don't have to have it connected to your computer to power the board. 65 jumper wires, male to male, so they pin into the breadboard and the Arduino or the Uno, I should probably just call it Uno, it makes it easier. Female to male DuPont wires, 20 pieces, and with these they come in one ribbon cable um, with the ends separated. Um, I'm going to keep mine as that, or I'm planning on keeping mine as that. If you needed to use a few, you could split them, but I prefer having it as one at the moment. USB cable for connecting to your computer. There's a pack of resistors. You don't need to know the color codes for this. Every value you need is printed on tape in the pack with the resistors, but it's a good idea to learn the color code. It comes with a thermistor. They say diode rectifier. It's a 1N4007 diode. You get five of those. Electrolytic capacitors, you get four in total. Two of them are 10 microfarads, two are 100 microfarads. You get 10 NPN transistors. Five of them are PN2222s, and five of them are S8050s. There's a tilt ball switch, which is basically a little metal tube with a ball bearing inside. There is, well, there are five of the small buttons that go into breadboard really well. LEDs, we have a selection. There's five each of red, yellow, blue, green, and white. And there is also an RGB LED included. There's 10 ceramic capacitors. Five of them are 22 picofarad and five are 104 picofarad. And then the last item, they say photoresistor in brackets photocell or light dependent resistor. Different names for the same component. With the ceramic capacitors, the values are printed on them. So for the 22 picofarad, it's got 22 stamped on it. For the 104 picofarad, it's got 104 stamped on it. Um, the electrolytic capacitors have the values written on and pretty much every other component you need will have identification on it. It's a very easy system to use. Let's just get out the breadboard. And... Yeah, this is a nice long breadboard that we got here. For those of you who don't know, breadboard works in a certain way I'm just going to find a screwdriver to point basically the top rail runs all the way along these are two separate rails at the top between the blue and red lines the top one they have marked up blue and negative the bottom one is red and positive so that rail runs all the way along it's repeated at the bottom they don't interconnect between top and bottom but it just provides an option there. So on breadboard, generally the outer rails run along this way. And then on the actual middle section, it goes up. So as you can see here, it's labeled quite well. So A1, B1, C1, D1, E1 are all connected together. A2, B2, C2, D2, etc., are connected together. There is a gap in the middle, which is useful when you're placing ICs on here, because you can have one set of legs on one side, one set on the other side, and they don't connect, because this is a physical gap in the connections. 
these connections up here are separate to these down here. So generally, along the top and bottom is horizontal, and then in the middle is vertical alignment with the gap. Different breadboards do vary, but that is a general convention for these. Um, makes plugging like these wires in, you just get one, you just, there we go, connection made. Um, if say you wanted to plug a component in, some of them do just go straight in and then you can put your wires below to do that. Um, it's very easy to do. And that is it for the breadboard. If anyone wants more details on various bits, feel free to ask. Just gonna talk a little bit about the lessons and the codes provided with the lessons. Um, I'm a beginner with Arduino. I've, my most experienced programming microcontrollers before this was with the Pickaxe line of PIC microcontrollers, which I think was basic. I'm not totally sure on what language was used. With Arduino, it's a little bit more complex. Every lesson that comes with this does have code that you just import into the IDE and then you can upload to the board. My problem with it is they don't explain enough about the code, so why they're using which function. I'd have liked to have seen something in there saying this is the command to set this pin as an output or this pin as an input, something like that. I'd have preferred to see more of that would have made it a bit better. Um, I think if you want to develop more with this, you're gonna to have to either read the code and try and understand it or get a book to go along with it or there's plenty of YouTube videos with various things on it. I bought this just because I wanted it. I've wanted an Arduino for a while, kept trying to justify getting one. Then I had a look on Amazon and they, there was this kit, it was, 41.99 I think which is British pounds I thought I'll order it I mean even if the Uno board was no good I thought I got plenty of components in here that the Uno board you can get quite cheaply so I could change over if needed but everything I've done so far has been working fine that is basically my quick overview of this kit um, I'm sorry that most of the video you've just been looking at the same angle and listening to me talk. I'm just doing it on my iPad where I don't actually have a way of showing something as big as this box easily. Um, I'll work on that in the future or I'd use my camera. I just like using the iPad for quick videos because it's easy to upload and easy to edit and everything. Okay, that's it for this video. I will be back at some point. I'm not sure what my video will be about. It's as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. If anyone's got any questions, just leave a comment and I will answer to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.